June 29th, 2016 will forever live in infamy for those who were able to live through it, as some can argue that the entire future of the league was determined after chaos was ensued. All within about an hour, news broke that the then top free agent Steven Stamkos was set to return to Tampa, and that two high caliber defensemen by the names of P.K. Subban and Shea Weber were swapped for one another in one for one fashion. But one transaction from that day really took the cake. The New Jersey Devils were in desperate need of a goal scoring talent, one that could elevate the team to the next level, and the Oilers were in need of a shutdown defenseman. And when an attempt to trade a guy by the name of Leon Dreisaitl to Montreal for Subban went south, Shirelli decided to hit up Ray Shiro, sending elite winger Taylor Hall to New Jersey in exchange for Adam Larson, ironically in one for one fashion. The hockey world went ballistic and many were left wondering why. Why trade a guy Hall's caliber for a seemingly unproven defenseman in Adam Larson. And sure, Edmonton needed defense, but Larson failed to live up to that elite offensive defenseman label. All eyes will be on both of them as their careers continued, headed into the following season. In his first year in Edmonton, Larson would be solid, doing his job and shutting down the opposition. But Taylor Hall did Taylor Hall things, and would absolutely explode for a monster 39 goal, 93 point league MVP season, almost single handedly carrying the Devils into the postseason. New Jersey he would only win one playoff game that year, but the future seemed bright, and it looked like Hall did in fact take the team to the next level. But then, injuries. Hall would be limited to just 33 games the next season, and then would be swapped to the Coyotes during the 1920 season, after he was reportedly unhappy and planned on going elsewhere come free agency. The funny thing about Hall wanting out was that during the 18-19 offseason, Shiro went all in to try and keep him happy, but when the team started to perform poorly, the writing was essentially on the wall. While all of that was happening, however, Larson would quietly make an impact for Edmonton. In the 18-19 season, he would produce 20 points and is still an active member of the Oilers, unlike Hall, who has continued to bounce around the league. And when talking about elevation, it's been Larson who's played in more playoff games since the swap was made. Whether it was in a good or a bad way, the Hall for Larson deal impacted both sides, massively, and may just be the biggest swap of the past decade. But there are other trades worth mentioning as well. For this, let's go back to the 2012 draft. Washington Capitals are pleased to select Alexander Sweden, Philip Forsberg. Selected 12th overall by the Washington Capitals, Philip Forsberg would never play a single game in a Capitals sweater. And the reasoning kinda made sense at the time. During the lockout shortened 2012-13 season, the Caps were sitting at a 500 record at the deadline and were in need of a top 6 winger. Ovechkin that year would be slotted to the right, meaning they were looking for a left wing to play alongside the duo of Backstrom and Ovi. The Capitals were eyeing Predators forward Martin Erat, who at the time led the team with 17 assists and was tied for first in team scoring. Luckily for them, the Preds were willing to trade away veterans in exchange for younger talent, and Nashville would trade Erat to Washington alongside of a depth AHLer in Michael Latta in return for Philip Forsberg. For Washington, it seemed as if the move paid off. They would win 10 out of their next 11 games and would in fact make the playoffs, but would lose in upset fashion to the Rangers in round one, where Erat would fail to produce a single point. As for Nashville, they would draft 14th overall because of the deal, thus being able to select defenseman Seth Jones. Forsberg took some time to adjust to the NHL, but in his first full season in the league, he would explode for back-to-back 60-plus -back point seasons and would become a star in the Music City. Iran, after that playoff loss, didn't stick around much longer. He would only last 53 more games in DC before headed to Phoenix, leaving the league a year later. But unlike Iran, Forsberg has remained a lifelong predator to this day, even playing a big role and helping his team make the Stanley Cup final in 2017. Looking back at the trade now, it looks as if Nashville committed highway robbery. But when looking at the trade from both teams' perspectives, it's hard to believe that this deal sort of made sense at the time. Unlike another trade involving the 2012 draft, as there's no defending this one, we're talking about the Griffin Reinhardt trade. We've already talked about how Griffin Reinhardt earned his bust status, and how he was never able to live up to that shutdown defenseman status. With that being said, you would never expect a player his caliber to be traded at such a high price, but boy would you be wrong, as leave it to Peter Shirelli
Shirelli to mess this one up. For reasons unknown, Shirelli still believed there was some untapped potential hidden within Reinhardt, so much so that he decided to go all in, trading away the 16th and 33rd overall picks to the Islanders in exchange for the unproven defenseman. And right off the bat, this move baffled the hockey world and split up the Oilers fan base, as some believed the move was good while others believed it was horrible. The Islanders, however, would take full advantage of this mistake. Before the deal was made, they weren't scheduled to pick in either the first or second round. They would package the 33rd and 72nd pick to Tampa Bay in exchange for the 26th pick and would use that pick to select Anthony Beauvillier. But it's what they did with the 16th pick that really puts the icing on the cake, as the Islanders would select Seattle forward Matthew Barzell, making this trade look 10 times worse than it already was. Reinhardt, of course, wouldn't pan out in Edmonton, leaving the league by 2018 after being selected by Vegas in the expansion draft. While both Beauvillier and Barzell have played huge roles in helping the Islanders become consistent threats in the East, taking a chance on any player is risky regardless, but taking a chance on a player who's been given numerous chances is more often than not a mistake, and the Oilers unfortunately would learn this the hard way. Since the arrival of Kirill Kaprizov, the Wild haven't had a legit superstar since marrying Gabrick, but many tend to forget they used to have another star at one point in time. Although playing on both the wing and the blue line at the time of his departure, the Wild used to have a very young and clean-shaven Brent Burns, whose numbers weren't that bad. Burns would break out as Minnesota's top D-man during the 07-08 season when he would record 43 points, and even after suffering throughout numerous concussions, Burns was able to establish himself as a versatile all-star defender with a tremendous two-way ability. So you can imagine how hard it must have been when the Wild would deal away their developed star for seemingly unproven talent. At the 2011 draft, San Jose would acquire the winger slash D-man in exchange for Devin Setaguchi, Charlie Coyle, and a first-round pick. Now, this trade is interesting, as it may have helped both teams in two different ways. First, let's look at Minnesota, as when looking at their return, you would think they got fleeced. Charlie Coyle was projected to be a clutch power forward, and that he was. Although he didn't play as big as a role as some would have hoped, Coyle still provided stability on the Wilds' third line, putting up consistently decent numbers. Then, there's Setaguchi, who in 117 games would record 32 goals and 31 assists. Now, that's not necessarily bad, but it's not that great either, as Setaguchi was supposed to take a step forward, but instead took a few steps back. He would eventually bounce around the NHL NHL, AHL, and Europe afterwards, leaving the league by 2018. And finally, the Wild would end up replacing Burns with Ryan Suter, who they signed in free agency in 2012. So not that bad, until you see how good Burns turned out to be. In the 14-15 season, the Sharks made the announcement that Burns would, once again, be placed back on defense, and this move paid off. Burns would explode for a 60-point season that year, that would help his Sharks reach the Stanley Cup Final a year later. Burns would follow up that 60 point season with back-to-back 70-point -back campaigns, and even winning the Norris Trophy in the 16-17 season. Burns' best year to date was in the 18-19 season, where he would drop 83 points and 67 assists, setting career highs in both categories. Safe to say, he took the next step, and although Burns may be starting to head on the decline, he's at least proven he can clean up pretty nicely, so perhaps he can freshen up that beard for next season using the power of Manscaped. Manscaped is back with the all new Lawnmower 4.0. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Unlike the previous 3.0, the 4.0 has a multifunctional on off switch that can engage a travel lock as well as giving you the ability to turn on or off the 4000K LED spotlight for a more precise shave. The wireless charging system is also a nice addition as it can help increase battery life. Manscaped also has the weed whacker nose and ear trimmer, which can help trim the hard to reach areas most other trimmers can't get to. And finally, a nice little addition to include features a bottle of fresh smelling cologne that can now help you smell as fresh as you'll be looking. Father's Day is right around the corner, and if you're looking for a gift to give, then Manscaped's got you covered. Go to manscaped.com and use my promo code IDGT at checkout to get 20% off and free international shipping. Once again, thanks to Manscaped for the sponsor. Now, let's get back to the video. 
Sabres fans, I'm sorry, but we had to include this one, as the Ryan O'Reilly trade was a big reason as to why the Blues had the success they had during the 2018-19 season. After barely missing the playoffs a year prior, the team knew they had to be aggressive. They would ink David Perron, Patrick Maroon, and Tyler Bozak to deals during free agency, but one move arguably put them over the top, and that was trading for Sabres forward Ryan O'Reilly. O'Reilly stated to the media that, quote, he lost his love for the game. This, after having yet another mediocre season in Buffalo. So the Blues capitalized off Ryan's statement and swooped in to free him. Only having to ship off Vladimir Sabokta, Patrick Berglund, Tage Thompson, and two draft picks. And the change of scenery clearly helped out O'Reilly's confidence, as he would explode, becoming a clear number one center and taking on the best of the best, shutting them down on a consistent basis. He was so great that he would be awarded the Selkie Trophy for the best defensive-minded forward in the league. O'Reilly would continue that success into the postseason, shocking the world and taking home the Stanley Cup, making his love for the game return once again. Now, for Buffalo, well, at least they still have Tage Thompson. That's because both Berglund and Sabokta underperformed at best. Berglund would even go as far as stating he was upset at the trade, as Buffalo was supposedly not even on his list of teams he wanted to go to. He would eventually walk out on the team after only playing 23 games, and Sabokta would head to the Swiss A League before returning to the Czech League a year later. The Sabres have had it rough over the past decade, but this trade might just highlight how poor their asset management truly has been. The Jeff Carter trade, or should I say trades, is what I like to call the gift that keeps on giving. That's because Carter would help two teams for years to come, while royally screwing over another team in the process. In 2012, it was reported that both Jeff Carter and Mike Richards wanted out of Philly, and that was huge news at the time. Both Carter and Richards were key pieces of the core, the core that helped take the Flyers all the way to the Stanley Cup Final two years prior, so the future of the team was up in the air and Philly had to make sure they got a hefty return for their star players. Enter the Blue Jackets. The Jackets were hoping to add a goal-scoring talent to help out the roster, and they would take a gamble, trading away that year's first and third round draft picks, as well as a 21-year-old Jacob Voracek. Voracek, as we know, would become a star in Philadelphia, reaching the 80-point plateau twice, and helping the Flyers become a threat in the East on a yearly basis. As for Carter, however, things didn't exactly go as planned. Carter would only play in 39 games for the Jackets, recording 25 points, and this was only because Rick Nash was able to convince him to play, as supposedly, Carter hated it in Columbus, much like most players do nowadays. He would eventually become so hard to work with that he would be shipped off to the Kings after demanding a trade for a conditional first round pick and defenseman Jack Johnson, and many fans know what happens from here. Carter would become one of the missing pieces the Kings needed in order for a deep run, as during the 2012 playoffs, the Kings would shock everyone by becoming the first eight seed in the four major sports to win a championship by taking down the Devils in six games. Two years later, the team would win once again, making Jeff Carter a two-time champion and Johnson and the Jackets watching on the sideline. Now, let's go back to that original trade for a minute, the one that sent Carter to Columbus in the first place, as that first rounder they would trade to Philadelphia would turn out to be a guy by the name of Sean Couturier. And although it took Sean some time to blossom, he would become one of the best defensive minded forwards in the entire NHL, making the Blue Jackets losers of both the Jeff Carter trades. Today's video has shown us that trades are pretty much unpredictable, and you never know the true value of your return until years down the line, but sometimes it's worth the risk, as all it takes is one rumor, incident, or even a quote to turn your franchise around for years to come.